Heute ist es endlich soweit. Tony Correnti ist in Hersbruck und nimmt im Probenraum von der Band Stinger die neue CD Disadvantaged mit auf. Tony. Si. When ACDC asked you back in 1974 to join you for the album High Voltage, mm -hmm. the band wasn't that big. So what was your first thought? Did you go like, woohoo, I'm with ACDC? Or was it like, yeah, right, let's earn some money? I, I was honored by George Young and Harry Bender. So it was a pleasure to be uh, playing with ICDC. Uh, even though they were just beginning, it was the first year. ACDC wanted you to join them on the tour. But there were two reasons why that didn't work. Let us know why not. Yeah, uh, I was recording with Jackie, Christine and Flight that same night and uh, we had a single coming out and I didn't think it was appropriate to leave my band to join another band. That was the first reason. Second reason was I had an Italian passport and I couldn't travel anywhere with them. Jackie, Christian and Flight split up shortly afterwards. Um, yeah, in 75 they split up, yeah. yeah. So I, I end up with another, another band, either band, yeah. But you rejected ACDC for the band Jackie, Christian and Flight, and then they split up. There's a German saying that goes, I could bite my bum, which means, oh, bugger, you know, damn it. <laughs> um, did you go like, I could bite my bum, or was it okay? I could kick myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, I, at the time, I think I made the right decision. It just didn't work out. But Vendra and Young uh, kept me as a session drummer, and I recorded some other pieces uh, with Stevie Wright and John Paul Young. So, it didn't sort of end there, but in 76, uh, I didn't feel like starting again with a new band, so I decided to get married. And uh, in 77, I decided to give it all up for a, uh, a job that I, I, I liked doing, uh, opening up a pizza shop. So that, that was the end of, of the music career, yeah. Did you ever regret changing the drumsticks with a pizza pedal? No, I love food. I'm Italian. <laughs> um, no, I, two years ago I, I had the opportunity of a writer by the name of Jesse Fink that uh, opened up all the doors for me again and uh, I'm thrilled to, to play again. But uh, uh, happened to be 40 years later to do exactly what I wanted to do in 76. So, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> let's go down the memory lane and let's talk about ACDC and obviously about Bon Scott. Mm -hmm. In my remote um, picture that I have of him, he was drinking heavily, obviously, and uh, up to his death. And he, well, he just lived the rock and roll life. Which kind of uh, Bon Scott did you get to know? Uh, the Johnny Walker one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we often meet up at the bar and, uh, yeah, uh, have a few drinks and leave all the uh, hassles behind. Uh, we, we sort of... Uh, tried to live life. Um, obviously, um, it had an impact on him. Um, I, I since gave it away drinking, so I don't drink very much at all. Um, but he was a fun guy to be with, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. His former wife, Irene Thornton, revealed in an interview that he also had a soft side, a traditional side. Did he ever give you the inside of a soft Bon Scott? Yeah, he was a very gentle uh, person and uh, I think with a few drinks he was more or less uh, the very gentle guy that I knew. 
whatever problems he had, and never, uh, he never let out to, to other people. Nobody really knew whatever hassles he had. Any scandals you can let us know? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I didn't live with him or tour with him, but um, after a couple of drinks, we looked for the best lady in the house. <laughs> right. I'm not surprised about that now. <laughs> no, uh, it was a challenge, but uh, it, was, it was many, many uh, girls around, yes. Who was the toughest or the wildest guy in the band back then? Or in ACDC words, who had the biggest balls of all? The biggest? The biggest balls of all. Uh, <laughs> Well, I reckon Bon. He was the oldest of the band and he had a lot more experience than everybody else. Um, so everybody looked up to him. How about you? Did you, did you ever um, experience being famous? Did people recognize you on the street? Uh, did women throw their bras on you? <laughs> <laughs> Scream, uh, shout, faint. No, that came a little late. I mean, people knew us. That happened a few years later. <laughs> um, I was making pizzas by then, so I never experienced what ICDC experienced. But uh, in the 70s, people recognized us. There has been so much going on with ACDC lately, like Malcolm Young, <laughs> Getting demented, yeah. Phil Rudd's cloak and dagger story in 2014, Brian Johnson being endangered of the hearing loss. Yeah. Is this the end of the big four letters? Um, I think Angus will manage to kick on on something new, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, as for everybody else, I mean, it's up to them. What do you think about Axl Rose as the step-in for Brian Johnson? I think he's done a great job. Um, I know he's got a lot of enemies out there, but uh, it's a lot of people who appreciated him as well. Um, I think they made a good choice. And I don't know what is in store for the future for them, but uh, I'm sure Angus will, will work it out. Right. Yeah. What would have been a decent ACDC goodbye? Certainly not like, oh, it was lovely talking to you. Let's have another cup of tea soon. So what would have been a rock and roll goodbye? My rock and roll goodbye is uh, meet up with Angus once more. Uh, I haven't been able to do it in 41 years and uh, uh, I would like to share another cup of coffee and a cup of tea with him. All again. right. So, Angus, listen. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. Be lovely, yeah. Matthew Sting. Deine Band Stinger spielt seit Jahren ACDC Cover Songs. Jetzt habt ihr ganz neu eigene Lieder aufgenommen. Und dafür hast du internationale Rockstars mit an Bord geholt, darunter nochmal vier ehemalige ACDC-Bandmitglieder. Wie hast du das geschafft? Nachdem die Idee für dieses Album, ähm, grundsätzlich für eigenes Album, seit äh, 2012 schon gereift ist, bis heute, haben wir einfach ähm, Anfang des Jahres das Ganze versucht man so ein bisschen auszusortieren, die, ähm, die, die Songideen, die vorhanden waren. Und ähm, haben uns eben gedacht, wir, wir nehmen ein Album auf und wenn wir die Möglichkeit haben, diese Leute mit an Bord zu bekommen, dann tun wir was Gutes. Was passiert mit dem Erlös von diesem Album? Wir werden zusammen mit den äh, Künstlern, die auf dem Album mitgewirkt haben, ähm, verschiedene Einrichtungen auswählen, ganz gezielt. Ähm, und ähm, der Fokus liegt auf äh, Kinderstationen, Krebsstationen. Nicht jeder war ja so begeistert wie ein Simon Wright und die anderen. Es gab auch ein paar harte Abfuhren. Erzähl mal die härteste und krasseste, die du bekommen hast. Also grundsätzlich ist es so, dass ähm, man von seinen Kindheits Helden natürlich immer ein gewisses Bild hat, was sie so nach außen projizieren und da hat sich beim einen oder anderen halt gezeigt, dass sie dann doch ein bisschen anders ticken. 
dass es dann teilweise auch nur ums Geld geht. Mhm. Und dann war auch die ein oder andere E-Mail dann dabei, wo dann drin stand, stand ähm, dass sie zu Charity-Projekten so viele Anfragen haben, dass sie dann schon zum Arsch rauskommen. Ein anderer großer Star, den du nach Hersbruck tatsächlich geholt hast, ist Tony Correnti. Schlagzeuger bei ACDC, der 1974 die erste LP damals High Voltage mit aufgenommen hat. Und ein sehr geiler Pizzabäcker. Und der jetzt im Ernst in Sydney eine Pizzeria hat, genau. Ja. So, wie hast du es geschafft, ihn von der Pizzaschieber zu den Drumsticks zurückzubekommen und dann natürlich hierher nach Hasburg zu bekommen? Ich habe Toni kennengelernt äh, in Kirimir, äh, in Schottland auf dem Bonnfest. Mhm. Das ist die Geburtsstadt von dem ähm, ehemaligen ACDC-Sänger von Bon Scott. Ja, und dann hat sich das so langsam gefestigt. Die Problematik war halt immer, wie man ihn hier rüberbringt oder wie er halt drüben aufnehmen kann. Deswegen ähm, hat er dann irgendwann angeboten, er hat gesagt, er versucht es zu klären, hat dann angeboten, ähm, dass er in Italien Urlaub macht und wenn er dann im, im Urlaub ist, dass doch das eine gute Idee wäre, wenn er gleich rüberkommt. Und sag mal, das habe ich dann natürlich nicht ausgeschlagen. Du hast es nicht ausgeschlagen und er schlägt jetzt hier auf die Drums. Genau. 